round it out on number 10 here with a deal with management fees uh, or purported management fees, perhaps. So what do we got here? I like this case too, because we see it a lot, right? And what I mean by see it a lot is we see steps taken by a business, particularly a corporation, to zero out taxable income. And that's fine, right? But we have to acknowledge that when you're zeroing out taxable income by making payments to shareholders, because you say they're deductible payments, does not make them deductible payments, right? right. And I also like to always go through the discussion with you and make sure we get at least one case that has one of the good uh, factor tests. You know, you and I have done hobby losses before, and we've done, like I said, I think um, I think we might have done the Zhang case a couple of years ago, where whether payments going were again similar, kind of similar to this uh, salary or, or distribution. Um, I like factor cases; they're always fun. Uh, you never really kind of know how those are going to go because it, it depends not only on the factors themselves, but the weight of the factors. Right. Simple right. fact pattern here. You got a C Corp that had three shareholders, right? You've got an individual who's also the president of the corporation who owns 20%, but then you have two corporations that own the remaining 40%. Now, no denying the president worked hard every single day. Um, you know, he's putting in 12 hour days, a lot of experience, a lot of responsibility, whatever it may be. The other two corporations is a, a, a tangle of, of facts in this case, but long story short, people affiliated with the other corporations did provide some services to this Aspro company, right? And so there, were, there was some type of service relationship, but what there wasn't was any kind of management or service agreement between Aspro Inc., the corporation we're talking about, and any of these other parties. But that didn't stop Aspro at the end of every year from making payments to all three shareholders that they called and deducted as management fees. And we see this a lot in practice, we really do. And what those management fees did, as you can probably guess, was more or less zero out the taxable income, okay? But the other thing is they, you know, there's just some glaring red flags. The payments were pretty much in line with ownership percentages. So 20, 40, 40. And that's a bit curious because you're telling me that the value of the services provided in these management deals was exactly 20, 40, 40? That seems uh, uh, like, like a, a bit of an unlikely result, right? Sure. More, and then more importantly, this company had never once paid out dividends. So you have three things working against the company here. You're zeroing out income every year, paying amounts that are proportionate to stock ownership when you have no history of dividends. And then you take the individual president, and if you add that payment at the end of the year to his regular comp, he's well over half a million dollars of compensation, right? A pretty big amount. And what we learn here, and it's just dealing with our clients, is that you can call things whatever you want. Like we said before, you can call, uh, you know, Tribune Company could call something in debt, it turned out it was equity, right? Here, you can say these are management fees and deduct them, but when they're going to shareholders, obviously the IRS can step in and say, no, what these truly are, are dividends, right? And if they're dividends at the shareholder level, you're almost happy, right? Because you've given away comp taxed at ordinary income rates if you're an individual in exchange for dividends that are taxed at favorable rates. The two corporate shareholders at C-Corps they're, you know, they're, they're weighing regular income versus dividends received deduction income. So they have a benefit too, if it's a dividend. Um, but at the corporate level, as the payor, you lose the deduction. So now all of a sudden you're paying a whole lot more corporate level tax. And that's what raises the awareness of the IRS is you're zeroing out that income claiming you have deductions for management fees. And so we have a reg, right, under 162-7 that makes very clear that any amount paid to a shareholder that is greater than the value of services that shareholder has provided to the corporation ain't compensation, right? It's a dividend. And so um, we have over the years developed a series of factors that we look at and what the case did here is it broke it into tranches. It first looked at the payments to the two corporate shareholders, 40% and 40%, and then to the, the, part, uh, the, the president. And so for the 40 and 40, they just said, look, is there a history of dividends? If there's a history of dividends, then that makes it more likely that this isn't a dividend. 
but they had never paid any dividends in their life, right? And then, of course, they ask, are these payments made pro rata? Because if they're pro rata, it certainly looks and feels a lot more like a dividend because what is the likelihood that the value of the services provided happen to be pro rata, okay? Um, and that's a big problem. I mean, a huge problem. I mean, how can payments be the same? There's no way the services provided were exactly the same. Now, you could also argue, which the court and the IRS did, is that Hey, if you have individuals at these corporations providing the services and not the corporations themselves, you probably should have been paying the individuals and not the corporations, right? Um, and then, okay, if they're providing services all year, which they were, why are you only cutting checks at the end of the year? That looks a lot more like a dividend. And then naturally they'll say, what effect did this have on taxable income? And when you go through three straight years and it's pretty much zeroing it out, that ain't a good fact pattern either, right? I mean, if, if it weren't having that type of effect on taxable income, you'd probably stand a better chance. And then, of course, if you're going to claim something's a management payment, they're going to say, show me the management agreement. They didn't have any management agreements to show, right? So the payments to the two corporations, 40-40, identical, they made quick work of it. And they said, these are not deductible management fees. These are, right? Uh, dividends. They're dividends. And so the corporations had to deal with that accordingly. And then more importantly, the payor couldn't deduct those amounts. Got it. Yeah. I mean, and you wonder too, I mean, because it, it, it seems like, you know, like you said, it all comes down to the, the factors and being able to document and support the management fee. I, I mean, I guess absent being able to demonstrate that, that it's it's not in accordance with ownership or something along those lines. I mean, that, that, that really doesn't, that doesn't put you in a good spot uh, to your sure. point, right? Yeah, absolutely. So then they had to jump over, Damien, and say, well, what about the payments to this president? Because he's different. Uh -huh. We know he's provided a lot of services. We know he's worked hard. So are these dividends or are these just more of his compensation? And there's a little bit of a subtly different set of factors they looked at for an individual who's providing services. They look at his qualifications and how much responsibility he has. And in this case, the guy had extensive experience. He worked hard. That looked a lot like compensation, right? They look at the general economic conditions and, you know, could you pay more comp? And they're like, actually, during these years, times were a little bit lean. So high, highly unlikely it was comp, probably more of a dividend similar to what was paid to the other two guys. Then, of course, they look at the prevailing rates of compensation and they said somebody in a similar role as this guy would have gotten about 280K. If we treat this additional payment at the end of the year as comp, he's over 500K. If we treat it as a dividend, he's more in line with what was reasonable for his level. And so that makes it look more like a dividend, right? If we treat it as a salary, his salary as a percentage of gross income is out of whack. It's way too high for the industry. If we treat it as a dividend, it's more in line. And then one thing that I've always struggled with in the tax law, trying to understand it, and they use it in these reasonable comp situations. They didn't delve too deep into it in this case. They look at what they call an independent investor test. Would an independent investor be cool with the president being paid what he was in compensation or would that compensation being paid out reduce the independent investor's return on investment to a point that they wouldn't be happy with? And in this case, they ultimately looked and said, man, these amounts zeroing out income every year, going out as compensation, if I'm an independent investor, I'm not happy over a period of years that this president's getting 500K a comp and I'm not getting enough return on investment in the form of dividends. And so same thing. They looked at the president and said, when we analyze all the factors, you can call this comp all you want. It's not comp. It's excess comp. It's a dividend. And so now we got dividends to the president and to the two corporations.